Croeso e Parados Diaries, where today we continue with the British Science Week and I stay in wannabe countryfile presenter mode as we look at the sustainability of our future farming system. In November 2017, we moved to the beautiful Ynys Morn, the island of Anglesey in northwest Wales, to begin the adventure of developing a 12 acre small holding and planting a church, all while learning to be parents for the first time. Moving to a tiny rural village called Parabrits, which is Welsh for paradise, our pioneering journey has seen us venture way out of our comfort zone, trying new things, succeeding at some and facing challenges in others. This is our way to share our journey, encourage you with yours, and of course, share plenty of inspiring scenery and cute shots of animals and our young family. We are the Radbourne family, and this is Paradis Diaries. Yes, welcome to Paradis Diaries, where we are sticking with the British Science Week, and I get an opportunity to share a little bit about my work as an environmental scientist for UKCEH, looking at the farming system and our land use management. So last week we looked at food waste and how we can do our bit to reduce our food waste, make sure that we make the most of the food we have, and ultimately put the pressure on ensuring supermarkets do not have a massive surplus of waste that ultimately puts pressure on the farming system. And today we're going back to the farm, looking at how we produce this food and how going forward we can innovatively produce food in a sustainable way, a way that means that there is less pesticides and inorganic fertilizer going onto the land that can be really harmful to the environment, but also that are just really expensive for the farmers. But instead, can we look at ways of farming in a way that works with nature, not against it, that doesn't try to force yields, but ultimately can think about the whole system approach to ensuring that our food and our land is managed in the best way possible. The key first place we must look when it comes to producing our food is our soil. Our soil is so vital to all that we do. Whether it is producing fruit or veg or the grass to feed our animals, the way that we manage this soil and look after it, the inputs we put onto it, is so important for all that we produce. Take sheep, for example. I remember having a conversation with a sheep farmer once who, instead of calling himself a sheep farmer, suggested that he just grew grass for a living. Yes, of course, the lineage of where his sheep come from is important, but the key thing that he wanted to focus on was his grass, which ultimately is his soil. Because you see the importance of what goes on within this stuff under our feet will have such a huge impact on all that is grown. But then it also has cascading impacts across the whole environment, whether that is on the land, through our water, or even into the air. And so it is here in our soil and on our land where we can manage a sustainable future for food and farming. Now through my job with UKCEH, I am part of a large European project. It's called Fabulous Farmers. Now I've got to say that half of the battle with any good research project is to make sure you get the right naming. And I'll be honest, I think they've done a pretty fab job here with Fabulous Farmers. So Fabulous Farmers, or Fab Farmers, stands for Functional Agrobiodiversity. Now don't worry too much about what that means, because if I'm honest, we have spent many meetings trying to decipher exactly what there is to say about the functional aspects of that. But the key principle of it is it's finding ways for the whole system approach to reduce external inputs like pesticides or inorganic fertilizers, things that can be harmful to the environment and also just really expensive for farmers. And trying to work with nature on a whole system approach, trying to find ways that we can just utilize the best that comes from our nature. 
So fab measures come in all shapes and sizes from subtle changes to whole scale changes in the way a land is managed. So for example, I really like planting trees in a way that is known as agroforestry. So that is putting trees in the middle or around the edges of an agricultural system to help with added benefits. Other ways are things like hedgerow planting and reinstating hedgerows or around the edge of a field implementing a buffer strip where wildflowers could be seeded for pollinators and other bugs to have a habitat. So here at Cadegdor on our little small holding, we like to try and incorporate some of these fab measures or nature friendly farming into the way we manage and sustain our land. Now we've only got 12 acres, but it's really good to engage with the whole system approach. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> So down here with the chickens in our little bit of orchard is a great example of this whole system approach. So unfortunately the chickens are locked up at the moment because of avian flu, but usually they would be pecking around this whole area underneath the apple trees. And the apple trees provide them a bit of shelter from the hot sun or from the heavy rain, which makes them happy. They poo onto the ground around the trees, which provides the fertilizer for the trees to grow better, which gives us more and more apples. And over by our other fruit trees, we keep the bees and the bees will help cross pollinate the fruit trees so that they can produce more fruit each year. But then also the bees get a benefit of the nectar from the blossom in the trees, which produces honey. So the benefit of keeping a system like this means that we have chickens that are happier and lay more and bigger eggs, fruit trees that are well fertilized and pollinated. <laughs> And then of course we have our bees that produce the most delicious honey you can imagine. This whole system working together with no additional inputs, but just going along as nature intends it to do. It's amazing, isn't it? So this method of sustainable farming is actually age old in tradition. It has been done for many years. For example, keeping bees by fruit trees is well known to help with pollination. Yet it is quite innovative in the way that we approach it because of the importance of intensifying land for a growing population and are required to produce more and more food. We have moved away from these sort of whole system approaches, relying more on inputs of what can be often dangerous chemical pesticides or inorganic fertilizers that ultimately can wash into and cascade across the whole natural environment, having quite a detrimental impact. Never mind the fact that it costs the farmer so much money to implement in the first case. But you see, with things like agroforestry or planting hedgerows, it can reduce the stress on animals and crops, which means they grow better, so a better yield for the farmer. And that is without considering the increased habitat for greater biodiversity within the landscape. And this increased biodiversity can have impacts that benefit the farm as well. So for example, if you planted a flower margin around the outside of a field, it can attract bees and bugs that will help reduce pests on your crop. They can help pollinate the crop so that the crop will have a better yield at the end of the day. So yes, you've lost a bit of what usually is quite unproductive land around the outside side, but you have gained so, so much more. Overall, this sustainable farming scheme can have so, so much benefit to the wider natural environment as well as the farming business. So as you can see, I am encouraged that there is a future for a sustainable farming system. And I feel very fortunate to work where I do on the projects I do and to manage this beautiful slice of Paraduis here at Caragdor on Anglesey. And so I hope the last two weeks as we've looked at food waste and farming today that you have learned something new, that you've enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking with me with my Crunchyfile wannabe-esque presenting. I've got to admit, I do love it and would love to do more of it going forwards. But for now, I will say Hoyl Vaur, thank you for joining me and I will see you next week on Paradis Diaries.